Praise the Lord and welcome to part three of our training entitled The Bible or Soul Rule of Faith. Part three is entitled The Bible Way to Interpreting the Bible. Our objectives are one, to know the biblical keys to understanding the Bible. Two, to know eight simple rules to understanding the Bible. Three, to be introduced to theology and theological terms used in studying the Bible. Let's start with some biblical keys to understanding the Bible. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The first principle then is that the whole Bible is accepted as the Word of God and not the personal opinions of, of the authors. This does not mean that all the Word of God is instructions specifically for you. God provides clear context in which He speaks so that we can know who He is speaking to and what His intent is. A second key is found in 2 Peter 1.20, which says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. The interpretation of the Bible is by the Bible itself, and not any one individual or groups of individuals. Saints should feel confident that God can allow them to know His truth. All of us bring bias and prejudice to our prayer and the study of the Bible, which is why it is important to strive uh, for complete surrender to the Spirit of God. Study the Bible as a whole and not in its parts, and allow God to provide true witnesses that confirm this word. 2 Corinthians 13, 1 says, In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. A third key is found in Proverbs 25, verse 2. It says, It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. There is a requirement to search. Jeremiah 29, verse 13 confirms this when it says, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. God does not intend to hide himself from anyone, but he is only looking for those who want him with the whole heart. A fourth key is taken from Revelation 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things, <clears throat> things which must surely come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Everything is revealed only through Jesus Christ. He is, in fact, the way, the truth, and the life. Persons who try to know God through other beings, such as Selassie, Buddha, or even Jehovah, or Jah, will not find Him. A fifth key is in Isaiah 38, verse 9, which says, Whom shall He teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Truth is progressively revealed and spiritual maturity is required for some things. Saints are therefore charged to grow in the Lord. A final key is taken from 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14 which says, But the natural man receiveth not the things 
of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The things of God are revealed to believers. Academic study by itself will not produce spiritual understanding. Unbelievers will always struggle with kingdom truth, no matter how educated they are. Now in studying the Bible, at least eight scriptural rules should be applied to achieving correct understanding. The first rule is study your Bible through the Holy Ghost. This means we should intentionally facilitate the leading of the Spirit of God in our reading and study through prayer and a saving relationship. Though unbelievers and souls without the Holy Ghost can understand many things of Scripture. Sin and the absence of salvation or the Holy Ghost removes or hinders God's enabling power that is needed to understand some critical things. Rule number two, study your Bible systematically. Acts chapter 17 verse 11 says, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether these things were so. The Bible is a whole. Understanding the whole message helps with individual passages. Systematic study also forces us to read those passages we would otherwise skip. Rule number three, all means all, and that's all that all means. As an example, let us look at Genesis 7 verse 19. It says, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. If the Bible says all the high hills under the whole heaven, then we must accept that every hill on the earth was covered without doubt. We should read the Bible literally as we do other books. Rule number four says, a text taken out of context becomes a pretext. Matthew 4 verse 4 says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is the most common error. Context speaks to audience, culture, topic, etc. A pretext is to give a preconceived notion of what the phrase means. Even as Christians, we should abandon preconceived ideals that our own culture may produce when we set to study the Word of God. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 21 says, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Rule number five, interpret the Bible with the Bible. The Bible often interprets itself. For example, the parable of the soul in Luke 8 verse five is interpreted in the same chapter in Luke 8 verse 11. Not all the Bible's interpretations are spoon-fed in this way though. The principle of searching comes into play many times to find from the Bible what the Bible means. 
all of the Bible principles and rules must come into play to get to the bottom of seemingly difficult verses. A couple of points are helpful to note here. One, no single verse exists on a critical issue. All critical issues have multiple sound references. Two, the use of concordances, cross references, and other Bible tools are important since most of us are common men and worst don't speak original Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic. God has always facilitated his work in this way. The key to avoiding prejudice is the witness that is multiple sources. I will explain one example of an apparent contradiction in scripture to give an indication of the process. Acts 27 verse 29 in the old version of the NIV says, Having brought the apostles, they made them appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this, which is Jesus' name. He said, Yet you filled Jerusalem, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than men. Yet, in Romans 13, 1 to 5, we are commanded, everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. So the question is, how do we resolve this contradiction of God? We must first resolve the issue of faith in our minds. Can God contradict himself? Faith tells us simply no. Then the alternative is this is not a contradiction and prompts us to look deeper. The resolution to this issue is context. Obedience to governments, parents, etc are God's design to allow for a, an ordered world. There are instances, however, when these laws contradict the sure word of God, in which event God expects that we would obey the higher law, that is the direct law of God, over the law of civil society or any individual. Recall the three Hebrew boys. Rule number six. If the plain text makes perfect sense, seek no other sense. This is a similar rule to rule number three, which says take the Bible literally. If it does not make sense literally, then move to figurative, spiritual, or other forms of meaning. In Daniel 9 verse 2, 70 years makes perfect sense as 70 years. In Psalm 61 verse 2, however, rock does not make much sense as a literal rock. Rule number seven, the plain things are the main things, and the main things are the plain things. 
Don't read more into the text than what is stated in the text. In Daniel 2 and verse 41, Daniel is interpreting a dream of King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel was describing a statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. Daniel describes the feet and toes of the statue as a mixture of clay and iron. Daniel goes on to explain the meaning of the statue and in this passage explains the meaning of the iron and the clay feet and toes. Sermons have been heard, however, on the meaning of the ten toes and what each of the ten toes represent. The problem with those sermons is the number 10 is never mentioned anywhere in this passage. The point is not that the statue didn't have 10 toes, but that people were reading things into the text that were not there. Rule number eight, think about it. Thinking about the word is biblical and necessary. To be spiritual does not mean to ignore intelligence, which is thinking about things rationally. Joshua 1 verse 8 requires meditation and not just devotionally since 2 Timothy 2.15 requires study. Reference to 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 gives us a good segue to consider the issue of study. The Greek word here is really to labor or diligently apply oneself. Laboring in the word practically results in careful, systematic, and dedicated reading, thinking, committing to memory, and acquiring understanding of the word. The system the world accepts that does that is called theology. Bible students should at least be familiar with some key concepts in this discipline. As many of the readings to be done will make a reference to them. This will be a brief introduction to theology. Theology is the intelligent objective as opposed to irrational study of the nature of God and religious truth. Some important terms related to this discipline are as follows. Exegesis. Exegesis is a critical explanation or interpretation of a text. This is the process of applying all we just discussed. Hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is the theory of text interpretation. This is the principles and rules we just described. There are other hermeneutic principles than those we just discussed. Not all of them are Bible-based, as we strive to be with our theology. Exegesis and hermeneutics play an important part in every Christian's life. We all do these things without giving it these names. Since everyone does these things wittingly or unwittingly, our goal is to equip everyone to interpret the Bible based on God's word and mission of reconciliation, rather than on personal agendas. To exegete a text is a crucial first step to acquiring an understanding of verses. It is not necessary to be a Greek, Hebrew, or Aramaic scholar to accomplish this task. To exegete a passage, various reliable translations of the Bible are needed. There are three kinds of English translations. A literal translation, a dynamic equivalent translation, and a free translation. 
a literal translation of the Bible is one that translates the Bible identically, that is, word for word. Examples of these include the King James Version and the Revised Standard Version. The King James Version is still the most authoritative version. The dynamic equivalent is a translation of the Bible that is identically translated but puts in the intended culture grammatical structure. The New International Version is a good example. The free translation is a translation that gives the overall thought but is freer in grammatical structure. The goal is ease of reading. Examples of these are the Living Bible and the Message. They are the least reliable for rigorous study but useful to get overall message of a text. We end here with this study on how to interpret the Bible. We end here with this study on how to interpret the Bible and trust that you will apply these critical principles in your lesson preparation or daily devotion. God bless you from the Pentecostal Tabernacle Discipleship Ministry. Until we meet again, God bless.